Correct. Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Dylan Gott. Talk about yourself, John. My name is John. I don't know anything about the subject this week, but I'm excited to learn because if you're not laughing, you should be learning. I read that on a uh, on a piece of wood that was artfully hung in the bathroom of a friend of mine's girlfriend's apartment. So I feel like this is good because this will be a little jaunt for us because usually when we talk about somebody, we do a couple hours of research. We're not fucking shutting it down for a week. I'll, as If you listen to the show, you realize that, but... Usually there's something to go on that someone has written about a person. And I am absolutely pleasured to tell you, John, this is the first time anyone has talked about Andy Elliott other than Andy Elliott himself on his sales and motivation podcast. Before we continue, I'm going to tell you a little story. We did a podcast called The Wrestler Review. The, la- the first time we did that on that podcast, this on that podcast, speaking about someone no one else has spoken to about in the genre, that person's dog died. So, fingers crossed. We he have was very mad, on- yes. That we- oh, he was very <laughs> mad. Continues to be mad to this day, apparently. Um, I say, let's dive in. Tell me more about... First of all, can I say this? The name Andy Elliott... That's a guy who's wearing a lot of white in 2004. And let me say this. I fucking oh, yeah, hate you him. You haven't even fucking laid eyes on this guy. Okay, I haven't even laid so eyes on I would say I can tell from Andy the name. Elliot, Andy Elliott is a guy you hear about if you, like me, started... If you start exercising, I think your phone can sense hair loss as well. And it just starts recommending you people like this. He is a sales motivation guy. He... Nope. Started in the, as he says it, the automotive space, and he has expanded. He has done three podcast interviews. He is, at the same time, motivating as looks like to be exhausting. Um, John, have you ever had a sales job? I have. What did you sell? I uh, sold uh, different types of credit card terminals to uh, restaurants but really what we were selling was the data of the restaurants back to different credit card companies. So, yeah. yeah, it was a real fucking scam. And let me tell you this. I realized how I could be bad at it or good at it, but I didn't want to rip these people off. So I was very bad at it. And a guy named Mike yelled at me so much a little bit cocaine fell out of his nose. Yeah. So this is like, this is like, you have to be like, fuck, man. It's like a predatory. You have to be a very fucking... specific douchebag. I feel like Andy Elliott, and I know nothing about him. We're looking at a 2000s douche, which is, and this is, bear in mind, a 2000s douche is the reason why the 2020s douche. Can, okay. So he's an updated version of the douche that crashed the economy in the 2000s, brought forward to the 2024s. Let's meet a guy who, if he hasn't already, we're looking at a hard right pivot coming up in the next two years. Dylan, continue your story. There's no hard right pivot because he's he's already right yes. wing. Like he came out of the oh. womb right wing. This guy. Go on. Okay, so he um. There's literally this is more just going to be a discussion about sales, and then we're going to watch some videos because okay. There's completely nothing about this man other than what he's said, which I don't really believe other than when he is so he's on this guy bradley's sales podcast a couple Ooh. times and bradley <laughs> the, so the show is called dropping bombs and what will happen is when andy elliott says one of his weird like platitudes you've heard a hundred times just like he'll be like you know what the tortoise beats the hair and then bradley will press a bomb button it'll go <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty oh, fucking. Dylan, I would recommend you, I want listening you to, know to it, sir. Because Bradley's also tired when he's doing it. He's like, "Yeah, good point." <laughs> I want you to know something, sir. Two can play at the sound effect game. Oh, that's good. And then Andy Elliott's on this like long speech about whatever, and he keep Bradley keeps on interrupting him with this fucking bomb sound effects, and he's like, "Yeah, you really like those bomb sound effects, oh, don't you?" Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I already like about Andy Elliott is I can tell that he is inside his own grift and he knows it's all bullshit. And he's t- so when he's tired, that comes out, but he can't be like, listen, can you just let me show my fucking bullshit? I want to be able to fucking be able to afford vitamin water whenever I want. But instead, this guy's like, yeah, yeah. And then you motivate them. And then you go to her house. <laughs> all right. Uh, fa- okay, here we go. This is. This is the video that really got him 
uh, viral and it got some stuff w- written about him. So this is, is, anyone this else is really Andy Elliott. Dylan's about to show us two girls, one cup. I feel like Andy Elliott could be a total fake and I'm about to be shown. Oh my God, it's not. Oh no 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 no! Listen to this. Listen to this. The you can hear the audio. No 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 no. I can hear the audio. Before I say anything, let me say this right now. You know how on this show I occasionally fully challenge people to a contest of physical strength through fighting. Andy Elliott's on the list, bud. You and me, Andy. Here's my favorite thing, and it's also like most of his bio is just stuff that he said about himself. He's one of those people. Oh. He is the CEO of the Elliot Group. It's pretty good. Anyway, here we go. Before you start, before you start. All right. Yep. Um, just the tucked in T-shirt with the the hand in the pocket with the fat watch. This guy sucks. This guy. This guy stinks. This guy, if you order a salad instead of fries, he is calling you a big F with a big T. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my friend, he's got, if you look closely, his name is, his own name is oh on his shirt. Oh my God, his own name is on his shirt. Who is he, me? <laughs> he's like, all right, here we go. My entire team, if you don't have a six pack, you don't work for us. No, I know. Not true. Know. It's called Not true. standard. It's not true. How about we raise him? How about we raise him? How about we raise him? How about you guys quit getting civilized and you guys quit settling? You know, there's some people in this room that said, ah, I would sue my my, my uh, company if they uh, told me I had to have a six pack. We know you would. That conversation was for the one percenters. That wasn't for you. Also, here's the thing. He doesn't, doesn't have a six pack. No, he does definitely have a six pack. He doesn't. He does. He shows it all the time. He doesn't. I don't care. I mean, John, I want you I want you to know something about Andy Elliott. You need to stop judging people That's true, by their looks and thinking that they're always something they're not when they clearly Yeah, he has a six pack. Is he also <laughs> Is he also like he's like two Joe Rogan for Joe Rogan, which I really like? I also he's really like, like he's he'll so never clear, get on. Go for it. He's so clearly a loser's version of a tough guy. I got a big watch, my shirt's tucked in, I'm wearing a t shirt with slacks. Come at me, bro. Guess which parent left? Mom. That's a that yep, that's a that, that is true. That, that is that, true. What are you 100%. talking about? What, what was that? That was not also a trick a great question. Part of the Brad Lee podcast. Brad Lee is such a fucking douchebag. He keeps being like, "Really, your mom left?" And then Andy Elliott obviously doesn't want to talk about his mom leaving, <laughs> so he's like, "Yeah, yeah I, have I mean," to stop. and then I have he goes, to stop. "Really?" Because usually the dad leaves. Why I don't did know the if- why did the mom leave? And like, I don't know like a fucking guy's going to be like, why did my parent leave? Oh, I guess I was a little fucking piece of shit at two. <laughs> Dylan, I have a question for you. Can you hear the insane weed whacker that's going on right now that I can't even I figure I can't out? hear anything. Perfect. Great. I just wanted to double check because I was like, let's just make sure that's not being picked up. You're totally right. What's also very interesting, A, is the fact that Andy Elliott's mom left. I now know this guy. I can, the, Dylan, you and me, I give it five minutes. We could have this guy pissing and crying at the same time and it wouldn't even be like it would be i always think of that moment we did a wrestling podcast that was really bad and i will never forget we looked at each other and was just like all right we're making this show fun and there is we've just talked to each other for too long we've talked to each other basically for many hours every week for a decade and i guarantee you and me could look at each other bump bellies like the fat kids that we are and ruin andy elliott by literally how we would do it. If you literally went, oh, you have a six pack? And I would literally just say to you, do you think that's a six pack? And Andy Elliott would be like, it is a six pack. And then just us going, I don't know if that's a six pack. He would not know. I Acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. Do you guys want a Red Bull? Acknowledge me. Oh, it man. He says amazing. fucking crazy shit, too. At go one ahead. point, they're like, they go, um, what would you say to people who are okay being a schlub? Which just Can means- I guess? Yeah. You're defeating yourself. I don't want to talk to those people. They're already losers. We're part he of the said, 1%. that's fine, but then you have to look at your kids, and on the kid's deathbed, they're going to wonder, why was I a loser? And they're going to think, you. <laughs> Which is fucking crazy. <laughs> anyway, but also, they get, they're attributed with a quote. Yeah, I guarantee Megan's Law was written for Andy Elliott. He, he has not yet been convicted of being a pedophile. Just a, um, a judge looking to write some laws, just a politician looking to write some laws, walked by Andy Elliott and was like, that guy, that, there should be a law to let people know there's pedophiles in the area because people should know that that guy's around. He claims to have sex with his wife three times a day and he's 42. I claim that his wife 
does not do. I guarantee that this guy is the liver king of the spirit. I guarantee that's not his wife. I guarantee everything is rented. I guarantee he still uses a Blackberry by choice. Also, another fun thing, then you watch a video. That was in 2021. He did that interview. And then he does a, another interview a couple of years later. And he's like, I have to have sex once a day. And it's like, okay, well, the wife, <laughs> he, either she or him were like, all right, we have fucking, no, no. <laughs> we're in here's our 40s happened. here. I'm fucking not fucking having sex. I'll tell you what happened. He came home after being like, I fucked my wife three times a day. And she's just like, do you? Do you, Andrew? I don't think you do. Can you not bring my fucking business into your and i andrew you're bullshit all right you can tell people once a day not three times a day you fucking idiot sorry hun that's what he was like he is a cock loser i guarantee i guarantee he drives a prius that tesla that tesla gets parked that tesla's a renter no he's driving a he prius a, he a rides prius a harley driver. baby no he doesn't he drives this guy, a this, all right, here's how like you said right wing pivot this guy he never <laughs> This is great. By the way, he his never right recognized is- the pandemic. The pandemic. <laughs> no, that's a no demic. That's a mind demic. He just didn't act like the pandemic was happening. I want you to know right now, I respect Andy Elliott now. I take everything back. This man's a hero. The idea <laughs> didn't happen. Wait, are we talking? We're talking March. We're talking March fourteenth, twenty twenty. Never he- show. Never slowed down. We talked previously about Dana White and how angry he was that they tried to make a that the pandemic had to stop him from his numbers going up when he's collecting all the money in the world andy elliott exact same thing i i gotta tell you i respect that i respect i don't respect a lot of people i respect anyone if you were anti-covid march 2020 hats off that's a that's a level of let me tell you i know what's going on that i you can't not respect it you're a fucking idiot but i fucking respect it (laughs) no no yeah i I know what's going on (laughs) Well, his his view of the world is really colored in this interview because he's uh, his mom leaves it too, and uh, he's one of five kids. And by his his what he says is his dad wasn't paying attention. He was watching his daughters, making sure they don't get pregnant. Which is <laughs> like these fucking whore sisters of mine were trying to scoop up all the cum in the neighborhood, and fucking my dad had to make sure it did. So I went and left out. I left home and fucking. And also, like, he starts in car sales at 18, says he started wearing with blonde, dyed blonde hair and baggy pants, which clearly he's just like, now he's like, no, I wear the tightest fucking clothes in the world, and I sell cars no matter what. Yeah, it's, he's a fake. He's a grifter. None of this is real. His personality isn't real. He's an empty shell because no one showed him love. And he, we, and unfortunately for all of us, he walked by one too many affliction t-shirts and saw one too many Rick Ross rap videos, just the beginning part where he's going, ho, ho, and went, all right, I know what to do. I know my path. Oh, I'm going to really make some shitty 13 year olds. That's the thing that him and Andrew Tater, this guy are doing and Andrew Tater are doing is like, Hey, let's make it really annoying to interact with teenagers for a bit. Doesn't care about money. <laughs> this is fuck. He's fucked up. He says all these shits for. Uh, he's like, I don't care about money. I care about changing lives. And then he also says, I'd rather have a dollar than a friend. Yeah. Also, I would like. I would give. I'll give him a hundred dollars if every single one of the videos he puts online at the end of it, they just pan the camera to see the crowd. Because I'm guarantee you, we're looking at twenty people that he knows personally. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing that's so not. This is true of motivational and crowd work. Is a lot of those videos are a lot sadder when you factor in the crowd size. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a, a one of the crazy things he says is you it, it, if he does a million dollar deal, he forgives himself for one thing he did in his past. Oh no. Oh. So it's like, yeah, no. I made a, I sold a Yaris. She did she had to die. Yeah. Oh. I uh, I just convinced another 14-year-old to give me his dad's credit card to up this Patreon number. Sorry, me, for all those times you pissed on those ladies against their will. That was yeah. Hard Brad to Lee's pretty dope too because he says I don't have bad days. If I woke up, it's a good day. If I don't wake up, I guess it's a bad day for everyone else. Still not me. <laughs> like a, I'm gonna uh, tell you, it's good. Still not I gotta me. tell you, is, am I crazy in that I remember all these personalities just being stuck at weird open mics in various cities in the 2010s, and now by the 2020s they're like. 
you can tell comedy's like ripe for a dip that these personalities no longer you're using comedy as a grift platform but have now moved on to motivational speaking they're coming after tony robbins imagine tony robbins watching this guy being like look i'm a lying piece of shit but this guy takes it too far oh man this guy is i mean he's he's trying he's doing what i think is so there's a lot of comedians that you've never heard of who just make like really funny sketches and they have the same socials numbers as this guy does. Yeah. But this guy gets a lot more views just because of like it's all the hate comments because he's just saying insane things. So I'm going to do another uh, another fun screen share here. Uh, I guess this is his most. Which one are we going for? We're going for had to, had to call him out? This is his most viewed thing. So oh, let's, okay. First let's of all, watch let it just... in entirety. Without Let me just stopping, say one thing. Let me we'll just say comment. one thing before yes. we start, and I won't interrupt once we watch the entirety. I just want to say one thing. Those shoes and ankles, this man's a grifter. No one who goes to the gym enough to get that body is wearing a heeled loafer. I'm sorry. That's just the way the world comes. Yeah, this guy coming from this is coming from the guy in three quarter length trousers and navy slip on. Slow. I don't know who Lewis on TikTok is, but from your mouth to God's ears, my friend, you're a fu- exactly hit this fucking video. I love that. Sorry, I paused it myself, broke my own rule, but I love the fucking <laughs> music Dil- in this. Dylan, quick the question: Is, is that you on part. stage next to Garrett? Is that you? Oh no, I am Garrett. That's not me. Oh, How okay, dare sorry. you? I'm fucking way less fuck. You are. That's very nut. Take your shirt off, Garrett. Okay, now hold on. Now, Garrett's a killer. Am I right? Garrett, how old are you? 29. Garrett, does this bother you? Yes, sir. Okay, doesn't bother you enough. If it did, I you agree. wouldn't have it. Am I right? Yes, sir. I mean it. Now, come on, put your shirt down. We don't need this. We don't need this. You got kids? Yes, sir. Two sons. Okay. This is the last time I want you to take your shirt off in front of a group of people and not be in the shape you want your children to be in. What Andy did for me is he kept me accountable and he told me that I wasn't being my best self. And there's people in this world that can look at that and they can say, wow, he shouldn't do that to him. This is crazy. He's being mean. He's being mean. Or you could use that as a resource and you could tap into that limitless potential that you have inside of you and you could become a animal our business has 20x last month i've definitely leaned down i've lost about eight pounds so far proud of you brother seriously love you brother yeah we love you more and then guess what wait till you see in six months from now come on garrett take i'm gonna say a couple of things (laughs) yeah one thing turned on you get to change your life oh i'm not just turned on i'm motivated (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna fucking rock a huge goop after this to myself i'm gonna say this right now six months I I think we should become motivational speakers. You have children. We need to make some money. We're so much more fun to watch than this fucking dial tone. Also, newsflash, five foot five. Don't tell me how to fucking live. I'm six four. You know what that makes me? You're superior. That's so funny. <laughs> also, by the way, if you ever, if someone's like, take your shirt off, are you proud of this? The next move is you go, I don't do it based off of torse. I do it based off of shafts. And then yell size off and just take it out and get real close to him. Go Like that guy does not know how to handle uh, um, uh, someone's flaccid penis. Just not like daddy. You're being like daddy. He'll yell. Also, just don't. Yeah. Just also, by the way, people off. are genetically no, different. You're not already everyone like could- it- if you have a sh- if someone if another person tells you to take your shirt off and they're not going to bang you and and then you're just staring at each other they've won this immediately now, but that guy w- went to that he was a bot into the sales seminar. Correct. Yeah. Like this is the thing is, bear, bear in mind Andy Elliott is doing nothing else but timeshares of the spirit. Do you want to spend one week a year thinking you're Brock Lesnar, but we know about the allegations? Yeah, like fuck off, man. I fucking hate this shit. You know what? You know when people always like, we need to think about men. We need to think about men. We need to kill these people. These are the people that are making men fucking suck. That they're walking into a situation thinking that if they don't have a six pack, their fucking kids aren't gonna love them. You know what you should do to that guy? Hey, man, what what job are you? Uh, I'm I work uh, nights at an Amazon factory, and I'm pretty sure my wife has a pill problem. Is fucking my brother? Okay, a six pack's not gonna help that. How about this? You um. You uh, start stealing from that Amazon warehouse. You know what I mean? They're not going to find you right away. It's a big corporation. Heavy shit, man. Stuff that if they catch you, you've got a couple of hundred bucks in the in the bank. You can float. 
do I need to solve everyone's problems? You know what I'm saying? The other thing is, Andy Elliott talks about, a lot about your kids and never, if he has children, never brings them up once in any interview. Well, so he probably doesn't guess... have children. He just like, it's just a sales tactic to be How like, much think money about you... your kids. Oh, it's of course a sales tactic. Also, but here's the, this is why I love Dylan Gott. Let me tell you what happens if I said to Dylan, think about your kids, is I assume he's going to be like, I will. He'll then fly to Los Angeles, punch me in the face, and go, don't you ever fucking talk about my kids, and then just get back in the cab and just like, you're just like, who is that? It's like, he didn't even punch me that hard, but he was sending a message. Who's that? That's a Canadian No, dad. I mean, honestly, a, a real changing moment in my life was that Jim Rome episode where now, if anyone asks me about my kids, I'm like, well, you think about my kids, you pedophile? And then now they're a pedophile. <laughs> It's good. Okay, it's a really you're good probably trying to fucking go through my phone, see if there are any pictures of my kid in the tub. I delete all those, so move on to the next dad, pussy. What's crazy is he does behave that with his own wife. Hey, how's our son? Uh, I'm not letting you get up to any sort of that weird pedo shit with my kid. Uh, I'm, it's everywhere I'm the now, mom. man. Yeah, that's what they say. It's yeah. everywhere now. I, w- I, was in, uh, I went down the street, and there was a dog grooming place. I'm like, oh. You got grooming dogs now? Just put peanut butter in your balls like everybody else. Yeah, cause you're, yeah, we really are living in Trudeau's Canada where we have shops <laughs> where you can fuck, fuck dogs. dogs. Yeah. yeah, why you have to groom it? Just fuck it. What's next? Schools what's for French people? Do. What happened to what? Canada? <laughs> so here's my, one of the crazy things. is like, oh, So the guy goes, oh, your, your dad was your dad. Because everything about this guy says desperate for love, right? So it's like, yeah. oh, is your dad... <laughs> Um, is your dad like abusive? And he's like, nope, my dad was a uh, great guy, very loving. Uh, he was a chemist, just not a big thinker. Yeah, so he's abusive. Think bigger. Guaranteed abusive. It guaranteed it wasn't physical, it was emotional and verbal. Because <laughs> he was well, a thinker. It seems, like, it seems like he just wasn't paid attention to. Which, I mean, if, you're, if, if it's a single father and there's five children, yeah. Yeah. And his also, mom's a drunk. Like it's it's fucked. And like it's his mom. Seventies. Also, it's to, the seventies. Like literally, literally seventies. He's forty three. That man's four forty three. That man's forty three. Oh, I mean, no, he doesn't Andrew. look old. He just looks like yeah, he has he a fucking tanning bed tan. Yeah, he has that weird old. He has old. He has baby. He has fit baby boomer energy. You know what I'm saying? Like he's yeah. I, <laughs> he does. Yeah. There's a certain amount of people who you tan and you look better but then there's a crossing over point where you've just like your skin is a jacket now you know who andy elliott specifically reminds me of this is a very niche moment but it was one of the most satisfying collection of seconds i've ever lived in my life i have an energy where older baby boomers really want to help me and in the gym this is a nightmare because i have a bunch of injuries with my arms so there's a bunch of things that i can't lift the way everyone else does because those muscles were surgically cut and did not grow back. Then it's just the way of the world. And let me tell you what happens almost three out of five times I'm in a gym is an old man with white hair walks up and goes, that's not how you're supposed to do it. I will explain the situation. They won't believe me. This was the greatest moment of my life. I was in a gym in London, England. I was really sad. A friend of mine was uh, dying and I just went there to lift some weights and try and figure out how to be funny before I went to do stand-up comedy. And an old English man walked up and went, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. And a personal trainer at a desk got up, walked over and went, Steve, I'm going to ask you to stop speaking to other members of the gym. You do not know what you're doing when it comes to fitness. And then he went, Jesus, and then just walked away. Literally a parade. That memory, when I am sad, it lives right here. And Andy Elliott is the same energy of that guy. I do not know how to fix this problem. I do not know what the problem is, but I want someone to admit that I'm right. So I'm going to go for it. Fuck this guy. Yeah, I hope, his, I hope his dad died while fucking Andy Elliott's wife and Andy Elliott was there to see it. <laughs> and his dad's last memory was, it's in her. And then he just died on top of her. I love the line that your dad's a chemist, but not a big thinker. It's like, I don't know, man, chemistry's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, pretty, I have a fe- it sounds like you have one of the things that's like you don't need to know anything except for how to manipulate people into getting something that they don't even need. And then your dad was like, here's something that's very necessary. I don't really need to talk to anyone. Yeah, it's basically like your dad did something that in- directly helped people. And you're like, all right, I'm going to do something that indirectly hurts people. Also, it'd be crazy to be a chemist 
with five kids and you're a single dad. I mean, maybe Bro, he, loves it. Maybe I get, he found... Let me tell you, I know who invented giving kids Benadryl to calm them down, which is a thing, by the way. I know that you don't do this, but parents occasionally will be like, yeah, I give them cough medicine sometimes, so they just go to sleep. And I'm like, hey, well, I know how the opioid crisis really gets going. You know what I mean? That we're drugging our kids. Are you fucking out of your mind? No, me- melatonin's big. If, like, people give melatonin to their babies, which I, I've... I'm like, can we do that? <laughs> can I As do that, with, please? please? I understand I the impulse. I have a very severe sleeping disorder. Please just help your kids sleep normally. Don't give them melatonin. It's a living nightmare not being able to sleep. I used to be fun. I used to be a five foot five brunette man from Spain. Brunette. And now look at me. <laughs> um, so he meets his mom Hola. who left when he was what? two. They finally reconnect when she's, uh, I don't, he was 27. So 25 years later, he eventually cuts off contact because she keeps on asking for more and more money. And then he goes into a long speech about auditing your circle where it's like, instead of just being like, yeah, my mom really hurt my feelings and I need therapy. He's like, you got to audit your circle. And then he go, and then he says, your best blood is not, he not, he doesn't say, this is very, this is very, you got to understand this. He doesn't say not always. He says, your best blood is not your blood. I've created my own family. Yeah. So that's, my family hurt that's me. That's sad. I'm never getting hurt again. I've made my own family. Yeah. I'm the dad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I'm a daddy, I'll never die. Yeah. I'm the dad. I'm when, in charge. <laughs> I'm number one. Yeah, man. I feel like if you just, well, Andy Elliott was like trying to sell you. Uh, if I ever was in a like a situation to buy from one of these Andy Elliott clone people, I think I'm just going to overpower them and hug them and then just say it's okay. And then they'll just hard cry in my arms. Like it was just, and then they'll buy the Nissan from me. You've been cucked, got style. New sales technique: find people who have had rough childhoods, give them long hugs, sell them a Yaris. Why sell them a Yaris? Just give them the Yaris. Help no, out. you sell them. No, I'm still. I'm a sales guy too. Oh, okay, you can't sorry. work at my company if you're in shape. You have to fucking be exhausted from chewing. Yeah. Um. Guess what? You can't work at my company unless there's a stain on your clothes. And I, I'm not being specific on the stain, but the stain has not, cannot be unnatural. You can't just put mayonnaise on your shirt. You need to be eating an overstuffed sandwich. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are you fucking doing right now? Oh, I'm doing a uh, yoga. Fucking get the fuck up. Smoke a cigarette. Okay. Yeah. If you have time to lie, you have time to fry, baby. Now let's cool excuse down me. with excuse these me. fucking Excuse menthols. me. What are these things in the bathroom? These are called sinks. I want them removed. They're a waste of water. Hand smell is how I know how to track people. Exactly. Replace that with ashtrays. More cigarettes. Exactly If there's time to lean, there's time to smoke. Yeah. I want you to know this. If anyone in this office is vaping, that is the equivalent morally... And physically, of committing the Holocaust. Get the fuck out. <laughs> All right. This is really... This is, I think, Andy Elliott's... I have a couple of questions about Andy Elliott's on society. friend circle. Sure. Are Andrew Tate and Andy Elliott aware of each other? Because that that's a podcast I want to see. Oh, okay. So I Which think one that you- Andy Elliott is a smart guy in that he basically was like, I look... I look like every gym teacher the first two years they're a gym teacher. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just be Andrew Tate, but the salesman guy, because guaranteed this guy looked at what is successful online because he starts like yeah. basically in earnest during the pandemic and he's a smart guy so he probably capitalized like he's sorry he's he's good at taking advantage of things so he, he capitalizes on like oh everyone's on their phone in the pandemic i'm gonna be like another crazy guy online like you don't need to be that smart to have done this you just need to like want to be successful like it's it's him in the liver he's just like i guarantee he sees himself as sort of a failure because he never got to the Liver King's level. I but at every agree with point, you, but I will say, okay. I think that what Andy Elliott has done that's even smarter. It's and he's this is a name that everyone is going to be familiar with, but he's very much doing a Tim Pooling, which is Tim Pool built everything on YouTube, and the reason why he did that is because journalists are not on YouTube. You journalists are on Twitter. So Tim built his audience in a place where there's no one watching what he's doing. So by the time that he launches wide, he has a huge audience built in. So then he's basically um, 
like euthanized against criticism. And I would say that Andy Elliott has done a version of that looking at Andrew Tate's success in that he is doing 90% of the same thing Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's basically just saying the same thing Jordan Peterson said initially, which is like, make your bed, feel better. If you look and feel better about yourself, you'll look and feel better in the world. These are not... Like, these are not things you need to pay for to be told. You know what I'm saying? If your fucking desk is yes. cluttered, it is easier to work on a clean desk. That's not hard. But he just fucking ups it to the point of insanity. It's, oh, I knew it. And I was about to say, and he's getting a bunch of money from the weird Huberman world. And I was like, mouth tape. What a bunch of bullshit. This is, yes. This is, um, this is what he's selling now. So what I was saying is, the end goal of all these guys when they when they they give you all this free stuff, this crazy stuff, motivational things, is to sell you something weird and useless. And this is his weird and useless thing. It's called so, hostage tape. Which is just. <laughs> So do you are know you the familiar science? with like the nineties in yes. like everyone had those breathing strips yeah, yeah, across yeah, yeah. your nose in the nineties sports? I'm a wrestling fan. I remember Booker T. Ex- exactly. So Booker T. Exactly. So he's just trying to have and then to go viral, he puts it over his fucking It's like um all of these people just ask question. What is the tape about? What is the point of the tape? And then just a bunch of stuff about it being over your mouth. Um, his wife is more present in his stuff now. Um, yeah, because she's like, most... no, no, we famous. Well, and also it's like <laughs> a lot of times he's like, you got to fuck every single day. And his wife's just not there. So it's just like a woman who's like, well, are you really going to make me be in this? Yes. Yes, I am. And a lot of it, and one of the things is, if you're not making $100,000 a month, you should fucking get a new job, which is good. Yeah. If you're not, if you haven't figured out how to grift people off on the internet, get a new gig. By the way, mouth taping, this comes from Reddit, but it's from someone who says that they're a sleep consultant. Who knows? Here are the pros. It encourages nasal breathing. Um, it's a cost-effective way to reduce snoring. Cons. Can cause discomfort or anxiety, may not be suitable for individuals with a variety of medical conditions such as nasal congestion or respiratory issues of any type. Obstructed breathing and irritation uh, can form allergic reactions to the tape um, and can cause a raft of medical problems moving forward. And you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. In that it's not revolutionary. If you do this in accord to breathe through the nose, it's a, a quieter, deeper sleep and your mouth won't wake up as dry. Who's that a problem? For? Who's who's waking yeah. up every morning and going another terrible sleep? I need to drink some water this morning. Oh, Time just to put, put your mouth up against the mouth. shower. What? <laughs> yeah, instead of instead of a bit of water, it's just I better tape my whole face. Yeah, this is by the way, this is the millennial problem. Is we as a generation, we don't know how to just kind of fucking tape the pipe and move on. You know what I mean? It's never like oh, I woke up and I was a bit thirsty this morning and my breath was bad. All right, I better listen to 80 podcasts from this neurologist who has a bunker and a lot of exposed wood. Yeah, it reminds me of when I would listen to like conspiracy podcasts when I was in high school and I'd be like, this guy worked for the CIA as a receptionist. Yeah. And he's got some shit to fucking say. But Andy, Andy Elliott, I think one of the key things about him is he codes everything like it's military, hostage tape, the way he looks, he looks Elliot like he's Army. like... Yeah, exactly. But he's he's a car salesman. He's been a car salesman since he was eighteen. It's very funny. I was talking to I have a I have a few friends that are in the military, but I was talking to one of them years ago because it was based off of an incident where he got into someone's face in a bar, and he was explaining he's like the real problem of being in the military more than anything is the guys that never went into the military but have changed their life so they think they're in the military. And he goes, it's the worst. Because those guys are like, they don't actually know what it is. They have none of the actual structures of training. They just think rigidity and repetition and aggression is the way forward. And you're like, it's just fucking insane. Like, this guy's clearly just someone who never experienced life and is just LARPing as a tough man. Attention, yeah. Andy Elliott. I challenge you to a hot dog eating contest anytime, anywhere. And guess what? I'll beat you. 
and I'll only eat three hot dogs. You that is cuck. an amazing thing to do because he will always, he wants to excel at absolutely everything. So he will Bring accept your thing and then you will beat him because you've eaten a hot dog and his body will reject it because he's probably only drank smoothies. So no, his I disagree- teeth have liquefied to the point where he can no longer chew and he just has veneers and you will just eat four hot dogs calmly and he will lose and then get fat as shit trying to beat you in hot dogs you have a second contest he wins by a lot but he is diabetes he's dead now first of all if we had a second contest i would win the second contest by starting it off by going just to remind everyone the reason we're having a second one of these is he lost the first one and he no okay like be, well, here's yeah. what I would do. I'd be like, okay, how about this, Andy Elliott? A code off, but it's swordfish rules. You have to suck my dick, and then I code something, and then I'm, oh yeah, I forgot how to code, but you sucked me off, Andy. That also would work. I mean, I, that Ooh. that is. Ha- <laughs> oh, I'm making soup. Is what you yell. Oh no, I'm cream. <laughs> oh, keep it. Keep going. There's ten minutes on the clock for you. For me, one second. Yeah. <laughs> I um I think the movie Swordfish is one of the more fucking nuts movies. That, it's the most Swordfish 90s rules, movie. man. It's the most nineties movie it's ever. It's about whatever fucking Halle Berry's tits are in it. Mm, That's exactly mm, right. Mm, mm, uh, mm, Halle mm. Berry's tits are in it, and also fucking John Travolta's got a soul patch. Oh, oh, oh. Wolverine does computers. That's fucking sweet. <laughs> Wolverine does computers. Halle Berry's tits are in it. Let's the best fucking this. part is he has to code to make these squares, and then the squares make a cube. Because for some reason, when you're coding, they would make it a very interesting user interface. <laughs> I do like the idea that it's like a bunch of Scientologists got together and were like, we need to make one of our leader, L. Ron Hubbard's books good uh, into a movie. Oh, wait, the storyline's really bad, and this book sucks. Get the hottest woman in the world to show her yabos hell yeah like even they had to admit that it sucked i wanted us to say that dylan is confusing swordfish with battle battle uh battleground earth battleground earth or battles battleship earth or whatever battlefield the fuck it's earth battlefield earth was the scientology movie Sci- swordfish was john travolta's attempt to make everyone forget about that by showing us all oh. halle berry's yabarabos and i did i forgot about it completely i amalgamated them into one delicious I mean, movie. that's amazing i love that you saw swordfish and you're like this is what the scientologists believe in <laughs> no i didn't see swordfish i saw those fucking yabos and then halle berry did that movie where she has sex but it's sad i'm like i can't jack off to how sad this this fucking sucks why don't you just give me good times halle berry <laughs> how much would it take if i fully fu- if i was like listen I'm gonna. I'll do the the God Army, and the end goal. I'll be very honest: is to make a movie, a softcore porn with Selma Hayek and Halle Berry. Every sale you make gets us closer to softcore porn with Halle Berry and Selma <laughs> Hayek, and it's just a bunch of videos with that music underneath. Dune, 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 yeah. dune, dune. Fucking it stomach humping dog. Yeah. Fucking stomach humping. It doesn't matter if you're if you're in shape or not. We don't know what they're into yet. I just need to know their phone numbers. Get me Salma Hayek's phone number. <laughs> yeah, that music going underneath. You can't yeah. work at my company if you don't want to see Salma Hayek and Halle Berry have a soft core porn thing. With me. I'm also in it, by the way. There's <laughs> oh, three of 100% us. 100% I'm in it. It's like that Kevin James movie where he's like, how about I'm really good at MMA and I date Salma Hayek? What's the movie called? I don't know, man. Kevin James, I've made you enough money. So, so it's time for to me to get this. something I Kevin don't... wants. I don't know if this is allowed, but I'm going to talk about this. There's like a big shock in L.A. comedy over the last year that Kevin. So Kevin James is like a hard Trump guy and always has. And people are like, I'm so surprised. He seems so nice. I'm like, you're surprised that the guy whose idea for a show is like, uh, I drive a truck. My wife's hot. That's eight seasons right there, baby. And then his next show was like, I'm a cop. Cops are cool. My wife is still a fucking babe. And then the, they hire one actress and you're like, not hot enough. Get the babe from before. Like, it's, of course this guy sucks. Go ahead. Okay, now I can hear the weed whacker. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Kevin James also, if you watch any, like, uh, stuff, is he used to be, and this never goes away, he was a high school jock, Kevin James was. And it's totally believable to me that a guy like Kevin James is a Trump guy because I don't know if you guys know this about people who are right wing, but sometimes they are very, very nice. Some of the nicest people I've met in the world calmly are like, but you understand they can't date us. They're not human beings, but they're like, 
how long did it take you to make this fluff pastry? If you said a month, I'd believe it. One of the best, my my family, rarely do I cook and a two-year-old and Alexis will eat everything up if it's not just straight up junk food. Yeah. The best biscuit I've ever made, at the end of the video, it was revealed all the proceeds from the YouTube ads for the video go directly to anti-abortion stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. They have the time to bake. Yeah, of course. And then you know what? Of course, pro-life people love baking. You know what I mean? They want the whole nine months to bake that thing. Yeah. They want, they love things staying in the oven. Stay in there. What are you doing? Don't, yeah. Let me tell you what pro-life people do not like. Sushi or rare steak. They like say anti-choice people. Ooh, take that. Yeah. How's that feel? Your body, my choice. That's my T-shirt that I sell after gigs. Yeah, it's weird. Dylan going is, like this. Dylan is very lib. De- 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 Dylan's very liberal on stage. At the merch table, very conservative. He sells guns. Oh, yeah. Check this out. I do this. It's just go high, high and Barry scissor time, and then it's me going. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Dylan. He's shirtless. He's shirtless, wearing Joey Buttafuoco pants, and he's got a shoulder. <laughs> I don't strap. know what that is, but. You know the Joey, like the, the big billowy sort of like. Andy fucking, Elliott, I hope you're listening to this and just be like <laughs> completely Andy nullified Elliott. all my points. I'm going to say this. Like, it'd be sick if, si- if Hayek and Barry had their jugs in it. I guarantee that as soon as we said Kevin James, because I'm going to know know this. Andy Elliott, it's at 90% he's listening. Like they, not, not only that, he is screaming at his phone. Take your shirts off. Take your shirts off, motherfuckers. I don't know if he is listening, but I will say that he's probably just pumped someone made a thing about him. So I'm glad we made him happy. I am I just want you to know this Andy Elliot, your wife uh your wife will leave you, your mom was right to leave you and whatever your dad did, he was right to do that too. You're a piece of shit. I hope I see I think, you in the airport. I think airport. Andy needs a hug. I think that um it's also funny. Here's something. Here's something. Don't tell me Can what I, men are supposed to do. I fucking hate <laughs> Let me tell yeah. you what's wrong with men. Acting like being, being a man is a thing is insane. Shut up. You're Shut just up, born you fucking with a dick. Ch- yeah, you're just <laughs> a child. That's fucking... what you are, you fucking loser. Go have a fucking sandwich and go stare into the middle distance. You want to know what a man is? A man who looks at someone and goes, what do you want to do today? And his response is, quiet. That's a man. That's a fucking man right there. <laughs> I got some like fucking just... things I want to remember, and I don't need you making new memories while I'm trying to remember. Shut the fuck up. That's a man right you, there. You want to always he six with me? Go ahead. Is Our good friend Bobby Mayer said this to me when we were like, in our tw- my early 20s and he said i just never think about what being a man means like i never think about myself huh. as like how to be a man and i hope that part of society just goes away and ever yeah. since he said that i guess someone heard it and was like fuck this fucking guy in doctor pants i'm going to masculinity is now fucking like you just, ha- I don't know, man. It's just- I'm going to say two things. Here are the two things. Bobby is 100% correct. The one problem with that coming from the mouth of Bobby Mayer in the era it did is he was probably wearing doctor pants, two different shoes. And the next thing he said was something like, all right, let's go into a, let's go back to our apartment and drink sour milk and then see what happens in the toilet. Like, it's just, you know what I yes. mean? Bobby's Bobby is the wo- most wise man, but also just like, it comes at a cost and that cost is chaos. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt, literally with doctor pants and Crocs, and instead of a backpack, he just had a grocery bag with a bunch oh, of holes in it. I loved grocery and bag. It had Bobby. just like since it's like pre-smartphone, it was just like a bunch of books with his writings in it. I remember he once had an open mic in that period of time. It was I think two thousand and nine. There weren't a lot of people at the open mic, and he said. I'm pretty sure I'm going to come inside my girlfriend and none of you are going to do that today. So shut up. (laughs) And he walked out stage and I got to tell you, that's how you bomb. Bobby Mary is up there as my favorite, one of my favorite people to watch bomb. Also top secret. I want you all to know that I'm from another country. So I am better than you and you're bad. Yeah. I mean, he, one of the greatest thing there was at the central back in the day, there was a couple people in the crowd and, um, Bobby was doing really well doing crowd work with this lady, like making fun mm-hmm. of her. The whole crowd was laughing. Now, there's when you want to go to a comedy show, there's the crowd and then there's comedians at the back. The crowd yes. was laughing. But then she said, are you wearing jeans under your jeans? 
Are you wearing two pairs of jeans instead of wearing one pair of underwear and every comedian lost their mind? So much that the crowd started. And then he was like, and Bobby said one of the best things. He's like, I was winning a second ago. We're forgetting about what you said. I won. <laughs> and then he left the stage and it was like yes. the best I'd... closer to a set I've ever seen. Where he just said, I won still. And everyone, <laughs> oh man, it was great. I believe I was there and that was very good. And I also believe the sidebar that you're forgetting, didn't someone else go up and try and also engage with the same heckler lady? And it got really awkward and weird. I mean, of course it did. I mean, I've seen some great things. I've saw, I saw a man go, the N-word, it's just a word. And then a black man in the audience said, no, it isn't. And then he was like, yes, it is. And then a the guy's like, it's a word that'll get me to kick the shit out of you. And then the guy went, oh, it was weird on the subway. Like, it was like I was trying to segue out of it. Like, I got right. news for you. I was an edgelord comedian, like all were, and I had a bit with that word. And I remember a black guy in the crowd went, you can say that. But afterwards, I get to talk to you about what that word means to me. And there was a pause and he went, and if I hear you doing it again, I'm going to punch you in the face. And I really understood what that word meant at that point. And I went, gotcha, sir. Never say it again. I like that. He was both like very fatherly and wanted to it guide was, you. And then also were two people I'm going to beat the shit out of you, which is good. It was a, it was the best way to approach. It was the best way to explain that. Feel free to use that word, but let me introduce you to a little fella named Kansa and another guy you may know, Quences. Yeah, and it's also like, I don't know, man. Then also, if you use it, then then like the nearest person who hears it feels like they have to fight you. Otherwise, you can say it, and then I don't yeah. know, just the just, other thing let's I also not don't end understand. An episode about no, 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 Andy Elliott who looks know, like a neo-Nazi with this word. Looks like. Here's what I'm just gonna say. Here's what I'm just gonna say. And I say this about Andy Elliott and I say this about like edgelord weird comedy content is I've never seen it work. And I've been doing this for 17 years in the same way that I've never seen someone get really into like male masculine optimization and it lead to them being really happy work out. I think working out is really important. I got a variety of mental health issues, um, diagnosed, undiagnosed, some of which I'm faking exercise always helps. It always, <laughs> Yeah. It does. It always it's, helps. Exercising helps. And it, this is the funny thing. Andy Elliott was, made a really good point. When I was listening to it, I was like, yeah, I should exercise in the morning because then I'll feel better all day. It's that was true. One of his points, which is like all these fucking motivational people. It's the one. It's the rule of three, man. They say two things that make sense. And then the third thing's just fucking batshit. The other thing uh, I've started exercise doing exercise in the morning, eat a lot of vegetables. If you don't sell a car today you may as well commit suicide. Yeah. Like you want to keep your, listen, it's pretty easy to be happy. You want to keep your cal calories pretty watch pretty good. You know what I mean? Treat yourself every once in a while. Don't go crazy. It's really important to exercise, break a sweat. It'll make you feel good. The Holocaust did not happen. Those are the three things you yeah. need to know for like, it's, it's always, it's always like that. Like Dylan, you want to make sure you have some carbs. It's good for your digestive tract. Make sure to really think positively. You want to make sure some of the media that you're ingesting is positive. Use a woman's pussy as a toilet. Also, his sales stuff, like the the behind the paywall sales stuff, the whole reason he's doing the online stuff is very smart, where it's like, yeah, you can sell one car to someone when you are selling it. And then obviously, yep. if you create a social media account, you can create, you can sell a thousand cars because they're buying into you and what you're selling. Um, a lot of what he sells is just directly he wolf of wall streeted it and just wrote a script for absolutely every single no that someone says when you're trying to sell a car and that's what you're buying is you're just you're gonna subscribe and get the script and he did an example of it on a couple things i've seen and it is a good script it's like Can but we? it is like it, it the 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 it wouldn't work on you john uh i don't think it would work on it certainly wouldn't work on me because i don't have enough money but like I could see it working on someone who's like, yeah, because basically his point is like, you're going to get a car anyway. Why not just get one now for me? What's the difference between this fucking car and the other car? Like, who cares? Just buy this now, essentially. But he doesn't say it like that. He says it like optimization. And I know. Then get a nose. Which, by and the then way, get a toque I, that also I'm, optimizes. I'm really happy I went to theater school and was exposed to this level of grift in its 
uh, earlier incarnation, loose festival pants, just trying to have threesomes with 19 year olds. Oh yeah. Relating it all to poetry and fucking finances. And now it's like, it's just, it's the same fucking musician, different fucking song. I fucking hate these guys. I think that they're negative for the world. And if you would like to know how to confront them, Dylan and I will be selling scripts for how you confront right wing <laughs> grifters on our Patreon. That's patriot.com. Patreon.com. Patriot.com too. Patriot.com. We're off Patreon. We're now we've launched our own thing. It's Patriot.com. We don't get paid in money. We get paid in flags and bullets and and facts. About yeah, World and War it's two only. It's, World War it's, One, the fucking loser war. World War Two. <laughs> it's all like like all the stuff is. It just it's it. Uh, if you dedicate yourself to sales, like obviously you choose your own path, but it just like even more, I did sales jobs and I was like, why didn't I like them? And I always thought it was kind of because, you know, it, it, it is hard in the moment to just kind of like defeat someone, which is what he very much is doing. Like he views every sale as like a defeat. I've won, but it's, it's, it's fucking weird to dedicate your life to just nothing. Uh, totally true. The only ethical salesman I ever met was this guy, Barry. He got me into fraud telemarketing. After two weeks, he was like, this doesn't seem like it's for you. And I was like, like Barry, I literally remember saying, like, Barry, you seem like a cool guy. Why do you do this for a living? And he's like, I'm really good at sales. I'm also uh, working two other companies inside this company because um, fuck Mike. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, I'm secretly working for two other competitors, but I'm just use it, doing it at my desk. Woo! And I was like, what the fuck? And he was. He was selling gold and he was also selling um what's that thing? Colloided silver on the phone at a different telemarketing office. That guy. <laughs> so it sounds like he wasn't really what do you call it? He wasn't really a good guy. He was just a triple bad guy. That's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was so he was bad. Just such he was such an asshole. Good. Yeah, he was what it was was here's the thing with sales guys, is so many of them buy into it. That they're like, yeah, man. It's oh, just, he was you know, just aware. He's like, yeah, I'm. He shitty. was just aware. Like, this is the thing. Like, he was just and aware. He would sell like, some yeah. gold to a dementia patient. Uh, he specifically would not sell to older people because he was 65, and he's like, I don't like people treating old people bad. No, he specifically. Tar- I remember oh. he's like, no, I tar- I target 20 year olds. 20 year olds are fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean, remember that, literally- that's the way it works. So you just get you get yeah. some people with some fucking money, and you take it. I mean, it happened to me. Did it really? Yeah, I, I got a credit card by- when I was 20. I maxed it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I couldn't get a loan for five years. But there's no... But here's the thing. If you're going to max out a credit card, and I will say this, do it when you're 20 because there's no reason you need a loan and, and t- when you're, until you're 25. You shouldn't be able to use money until you're... I really regret not filing... Like, just not fucking going nuts and filing for bankruptcy at 19. You're going to be fine. You're not going to, they're not, you're not living anywhere where they're doing a credit check until 26, buddy. You're living in a basement that's owned by some sort of shadowy Asian businessman who's wearing sunglasses when it's cloudy, but when it's uh, sunny, no sunglasses. Specifically talking about my, my landlord in Toronto. (laughs) I'll tell my son this. Hopefully everything's all good and we can live in a world by then, but but like, bro, bro, just get dusty until you're 25. Oh yeah. Also, Don't get actually you- dusty, but you know, get hammered. You're you're invincible until you're 25. Get hammered, work some shitty job, save up a bit, and then fucking, you know, buy a car, run over, run over Andy Ellie with it. Yep, that's good. That's I was good. also gonna say, if you're gonna smoke, smoke between 20 and 25. Start quitting at 25. You'll be off of them by t- by 30. You're good to go. No real health problems. Oh, just fucking. Hot vaping. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, subscribe. All respect rating and us. reviewing. Go to our house. Respect us. Call us. So this is the last one we're recording. Uh, John will be in Australia, and then we'll have another one next week. We're not going to talk for a while, so go to John Hastings. Well, actually, John Hastings' shows will be all done in Melbourne. What a great run! It what was, a great John. run, guys! I can't believe how well that went. What's funny is you guys didn't know that we were in. Aus- I was in Australia this whole time because I'm very bad at promoting, but I don't care. But I'll be back. We'll be back with new episodes. Next week, even though these are new episodes, they were just right now we're recording it. Has Joe Biden won the election? The year is 2020. What's going on? Oh, when's the election? November. When's the election? I mean, no. It's right now. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're recording this. This is the air in December of 2027. Goodbye. That's right. Yep. Kamala, Kamala Harris has become the prime minister of Canada. What a wild world. <laughs>